Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Distance World Universe, Episode 2. And last time we left off, we were just talking about the settings here. We created our galaxy, and now here we are, ready to jump into the universe and start our game. So, welcome to your empire. So, this just tells us a little bit about our empire. Uh, the Dakar Empire, so you were the ruler of the Dakars. Your style of government is hunter symbiosis. Your empire has one colonies and one system. So we got our victory conditions here. Achieve 80% of the following. Uh, so our race specific. Your economy generates 45% uh, of galaxy total. Control 35% of the galaxy's population. Control 35% of the colonies in the galaxy. And then the victory conditions do not apply until 2125. And it is currently 2100. So 25 years from uh, this start game here. So, uh, I'll just read this real quickly. If you've heard this already, then, uh, too bad. <laughs> you are a standard empire in the Age of Shadows. Pirates, smugglers, and mercenaries rule a galaxy. Your empire is largely undeveloped with no space technology. Before you could take to the stars, you must first research critical technology like hyperdrives and colonization. Meanwhile, pirates and other re others retain these key technologies and thus dominate galactic affairs. As a fledgling stellar empire, you must develop the technologies you need while manipulating pirates and smugglers to work for you. And this just tells you what you should do. I'm not going to worry about that. Let's start playing. So we're going to pause the game real quick and we're going to take a look at everything before uh, we actually jump into this. So up in this right hand corner here, we've got our money. Our cash flows plus 542. Uh, that just kind of ticks over on its own little invisible schedule. Maybe it's a certain date every month, I'm not sure, but that just kind of ticks over every now and again, so nothing to really worry about too much. Got a little log screen up here so it tells what's going on uh, in the galaxy around us, and all these little buttons here we'll kind of go over. Uh, I'm not going to really go too much over the UI. You, you guys will get the gist of it as we play, and I'll kinda, I'm going to be explaining what's going on. So here's our planet here. Uh, <laughs> Thakwa 2. Thakwa, interesting. Uh, uh, we'll probably change the name of that, actually. We'll do that right now uh, before we do anything else. Uh, I can actually enter the game editor here and change the name of that, and I would very much like to do that. So let's go in here and change it. If I remember how to. Alright, I don't want to click on anything that's going to tell me too much about the... Uh... You gotta be careful, because this screen can really ruin... Uh... The game for you if you're not careful. Nope, don't want to look at that. Boy, how do you... I'm having a brain fart here, I don't remember... How to change that. Oh, here we go. Okay, we're gonna change it to, uh... Uh, Dakar... Prime. So, our planet there, Dakar Prime, there we go. And close out of that. And it should change there. Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. So it should change there. Sweet. And we'll just exit the uh, exit the editor. And uh, just... Sure. That's fine. Okay. The car pop prime. There we go. I just wanted to change that quick. I like to change that. So that way uh, we got a pretty cool name for our home system. Sorry. It took me a second there. I don't know what was taking me so long. All right, just messing around here with the keys. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do then. So we're gonna take a look first at our planet. All right, so Dakar Prime here, we're an ocean planet, 29.4K, which is our, uh, the size of our planet there. Uh, quality is 83%, so that's not bad. That's not good, uh, not as good as I would like, but it can go up over time. Um, the population here, so we got 200, or what's that? 2,767 million. So 2.7 billion at a plus 4% increase. That's actually a, a fairly decent start. Uh, the only resource we seem to have on here right now is the lithium crystal, which if you remember is our resource that gives us the bonus. The uh, This gives us the plus 10% bonus on construction. So that'll start right here on our planet. That's good, but we don't seem to have anything else. So we're going to have to go out there and find some other things if we're going to get a... Um, if we're going to get anything started here. And this planet, we should actually start with... Um, let's see, there's our empire there. So we should actually start with resources already in store for us. So that won't be too big of a deal. We'll be able to uh, build all the ships we need right off the beginning with the amount of resources we have uh, stored up. 
but yeah, so we're plus 21% happy. We're a pretty happy empire. Pretty excited to get out there, start uh, start the uh, slaughtering and the pillage of other empires. So, and it's just kind of like our empire worth uh, tax percent on the planet right now and whatnot and other things. Not that we really need to go over too much right now. Let's take a look at the rest of the solar system that we started in. So here is our solar system. And for anybody that hasn't seen the game yet, you're about to realize how big the game is. But um, it's pretty fucking huge. But let's just go over our solar system first. So let's see. What do we got here? Uh, we got some moons hanging around us. Um, this one actually has an ancient monolith of uh, Thakwa on it, which is pretty neat. All right, and what else do we got here? So there's a ruin here. These little three dots, basically, that are here just means that there's a ruin on this planet. There is a stone nexus uh, nexus of Thakwa. So you can get pretty cool things from ruins. We might get lucky. Who knows? There's another ruin there. Um, I'm kind of bummed out because sometimes you'll start with a moon around you. Sometimes you'll start as a moon around a gas giant, which is probably one of the better starts. Um, however, it looks like we just started in the middle of everything. What is this? A continental planet so quality of 98% awesome that is really good that could potentially be another colony uh, in the future a small little colony inside this system maybe we could set up like a uh, like some type of uh, defense battery there or something but uh, I'm getting way ahead of myself that will be way down the road all right and what do we start for gas giants here we got a gas giant here a moon some moons around it uh, an ice moon okay and it looks like there's a ship here uh, an abandoned ship so we can come and uh, capture this and let's see what else all right we got another gas giant here with a moon next to it a uh, barren rock moon and here's an, another ice moon with another uh, gas giant all right and then over here we have another ice planet and it looks like another abandoned ship however this one is uh, a destroyer and it's somewhat uh, dis somewhat damaged here we've got components 42 of them are damaged but uh, we could probably send a repair ship over there, repair that, and claim it as our own. Decide what to do with, uh, do with it after that. Another gas giant with a barren rock moon. And yeah, so in a desert planet for this uh, planet here with the stone nexus on it. So nothing too close to us really. I think uh, the, definitely the first thing we need to do is, is going to need to uh, acquire a set of fuel for our ships. And we'll probably try to hit these two gas plants first. Let's see. Um... So I see which way we're going real quickly. We're going this way. And this is going this way with us. Looks like everything's going that way there. Okay, so yeah, we'll probably hit this up first and see what we can't get from it. Maybe get some type of um, uh, some type of good form of gas there. All right, let's take a look now at our uh, character screen. So here's our leader. He's ruling from our uh, from Dakar Prime, which is of course our home planet. And uh, let's see. So war wariness reduction plus twelve percent, colony corruption reduction plus twenty eight percent, military ship maintenance savings plus twenty percent, troop maintenance savings plus twenty uh, twenty six percent. This guy is a very good leader, and especially a really good leader for uh, what goals we're going to be going for with our race. So that is going to be very useful. Especially with the war wariness reduction. We're never going to suffer from war wariness at all. Uh, we got a troop general we started out with. That's interesting. Never started out with a troop general before. He's not going to be very valuable to us until we actually start building troops. So that could be a while. And then we started with one intelligent agent. And uh, he's going to be very valuable because he's the only intelligent agent we have. And so we're just going to put him on uh, counterintelligence. And assign him that mission and basically what he's going to do is just make sure that races aren't uh, trying to steal technology or anything from us. Alright, there's going to be nothing in the diplomacy screen right now. Let's open our empire summary screen. Just take a look at what we got here. So, uh, if this is your first time seeing the game, something really cool to note about the game is that this is our state economy. So, this is the money that I have on hand to spend up here. And then this is the private economy. So, there's two sectors of economy in the game the private economy is almost like an economy so I said that we're gonna be controlling everything and things aren't automated however there is a part of the game that you can't control but it's a good thing you want this to be under the control of the AI and it's basically your private economy so when we build mining stations and we build uh, uh, other colonies and stuff like that there'll be little ships that kind of populate our empire for us and those ships will do things like uh, 
haul cargo and freight back and forth between planets. Uh, they'll, they'll haul people between planets. Mining ships will go out and mine the resources we need. And uh, that's the private sector. And the private sector, you want to keep healthy because you want the private sector to have money to be able to build its own ships. But what's really neat is the private sector buys that all from you. So you collect tax from the private sector. When they buy ships, you make money and, uh, and stuff like that. So it's pretty neat, actually. You'll see how it all comes into effect as we keep going along. So we've got our hunter symbiosis uh, government type over here and a little bit about our colony or our race in general. Uh, one colony and one system. A little bit about some of the bonuses we have. So nothing too crazy yet on the screen. And uh, so let's see, one thing we want to do is right off the bat, I want to go into research and just line ourselves up with what we're going to need off uh, research wise. So starfighters, we start off already a little bit in the research of starfighters. Um, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep that going then. Uh, looks like we can't cancel it anyway since it's on a crash program. So we're going to get starfighters pretty quickly. That's fine. We'll keep that there. Uh, and what else do we want to go for? So after Starfighters, I'm thinking we'll go with... Hmm. Let's get armor plating off the bat. That's pretty important to make sure that we're going to have uh, armor plating for our ships. And we're going to go with... Enhanced beam weapons, energy torpedo, ship boarding, enhanced missiles, railgun weaponry. Boy. Let's go with uh, Railgun Weaponry. Yeah, let's do that. So I usually like to stay uh, two or three technologies ahead just in case I forget to get come in this research screen and queue things up. Um, I will be a couple of technologies ahead. If I do one at a time, I tend to get thrown off. So looks like we're starting with shields. That's fine. We'll leave that. Um, nothing wrong with some shields right off the bat. Space reactors. All right. We want to get these warp field precursors soon. I think space reactors, let's see, that's fine. Advanced nuclear fission, yeah, so we're definitely going to stick with the shields. Um, enhanced maneuvering, proton ionization, space construction. Let's let's see where we're at. Let's see, let's just queue energy collection up. Uh, that's pretty important. So we'll, we'll queue up energy collection and we'll just see where we're at. Uh, after the shields are done, whether or not we're close enough to get warp field precursors, maybe not. Actually, we might be. It's hard to say. Enhanced resource exploration, that's fine. Uh, that's just going to help us find the resources around our galaxy and around, uh, a lot better, so we'll just keep that up where it is. Um, but what else do I want after that? I uh, won't worry about that stuff yet. Proximity sensors is not a big deal. Um, right there, let's see. Oh, this one's just for us only, so that's pretty cool. Hunger, uh, Hunter Seeker code. Improvement to Hunger Seeker, Hunger Seeker. What is Hunger Seeker? Okay, this is Hunger Seeker. So this is our uh, our advanced uh, sensor thing, and only we can get this. So that's pretty cool. So we can, we're going to be able to have an, an amazing uh, system to be able to scan the Empire and see what everybody's up to. Let's go with... Uh, Hmm. Yeah, we do want to get entertainment entertainment systems pretty quickly, along with medical systems. Uh, more advanced crew systems isn't really important right now. Hmm. Let's actually increase our storage systems, just because uh, the extra fuel bump uh, is going to give us a advantage in exploration when the time comes. So yeah, we'll just stick with those for now. That sounds very good to me. So yeah, that when you start a new game, a lot of it's just setting up everything and making sure everything's good to go. Alright, so ships and bases here. Let's see, oh, we don't have any ships or bases. I actually gotta... Let's see. Give me a second while I fumble a little bit. Ah, oh, the design screen, that's what I want there. So It's been a while since I've actually played this game. It's actually been a long time, so we might, might fumble a little bit with the controls, but I usually uh, catch on pretty quickly with uh, these things, so... Let's just show the uh, state bases. This is all I'm really worried about right now. Um, just stick with the latest buildable design. So for a spaceport, we don't need a, a large spaceport right off the bat. We can always upgrade to one eventually at some time. Um, although I don't know if I want to start with a small spaceport. I'm almost thinking medium. 
Uh, maintenance is 1650. It's a little high. Cost is 9,000. I would like to start with a small, maybe. Yeah, let's start with a small spaceport first, actually. Um, just because I don't want to run my cash flow down right off the beginning. It could be very ugly. So a lot of people sometimes you'll see start with a large spaceport right off the bat and just kind of make up the difference over time or they'll start with a medium. I'm just going to start with a small. Actually, no, I'm going to start with the medium. <clears throat> I changed my mind at the last second. I, I'm going to start with the medium. So let's, uh, let's see, retrofit automatic upgrade manual. I actually want to change this. All manual retrofit, I think. Well, no, we'll keep it on automatic for stations. Um, but for, let's see, state bases, state ships, automatic is fine. Bases is fine. Private ships is fine. Right, escort. Uh, frigate destroyer. Actually, I want these to be manual. I want to manually upgrade those myself. Um, private bases is fine. Okay. Alright, so small spaceport. Let's see, medium spaceport. So let's take a look real quick. Alright, do not have the supplies required. Consider adding shield components. Consider adding armor components. Consider adding energy collector components. Yeah, we don't have any of those yet to add. So there's really nothing I could do to this to change it up. Bunch of seeking missiles. Uh, I'll just keep it the way it is then. That's fine. So let's get that started. We need to get construction started on that. It's going to take a while. So we're going to construct ourselves the medium spaceport. Do let me know in the comments if I miss anything too, guys. I might miss a lot of things right off the beginning here. Um, it's very possible that I do that. And it's going to take a while to construct, so we're just going to fast forward here and let that happen. And uh, right in the beginning of the game, usually pirates will come and visit you and you'll have to pay them money. So I'm expecting that to happen any second now. It's just a random event that happens every game you start when you come into contact with pirates. But yeah, so we got our spaceship or our space station there constructing. And we could probably actually start the construction of a construction ship at the same time, I think. I'm not sure if I could do that at the same time or not. I don't remember. Take a look real quick at this. Okay, here's our private ships here. Just leave those how they are for now. State ships. I think these are all fine. I kind of want to change the names, maybe. Yuri, Tycho, Kobe. Actually, I'll keep those the same. Those are pretty cool names, actually. Kobe, Tycho, Yuri. I like those. Uh, X1 Surveyor, CST1 Shipyard. That's the construction ship. And we'll change the names of these ones, probably. Um, the Surveyor's fine. Uh, shipyard's fine. I like the graphics for our ship. Those are very cool. So basically the beginning of the game is a little slow, so I do apologize. Things are going to drag the first couple, you know, first one or two, three episodes. It takes a while for things to really start happening, but that's all part of the game, so can't really complain there. Ooh, really quickly, uh, what is this building? Let's uh, zoom out and just take a look at the where we are in the galaxy since we haven't done that yet. So here we are, and it looks like uh, we're right... Let's see. Right here up in the top left-hand corner. Well, no. Well, yeah, if I had to divide the map into four sections, we're in the top left-hand corner of the map, but we're pretty close to the center of the map. That's going to be interesting. Uh, one time when I played the game, I started down here in the corner, in the right corner. It was kind of cool because I actually cut myself like a really nice section of the map out and created a giant empire, and it was a lot of fun. But from where we're starting here now, it looks like it's going to be kind of a pain. We're going to be on all sides surrounded by galaxies or by other empires not galaxies we're gonna be surrounded by other empires so that could be kind of a pain and we had a new uh, character trait created so generous uh that gives us minus 10 percent colony corruption reduction and plus 10 percent colony happiness oh best leader ever and i'm pretty sure our leader don't switch out because we're uh we're kind of like a dictatorship almost in a way so he'll be our leader for as long as he's uh, alive which is good because he has really good traits. So colony, uh, colony happiness going up is definitely going to increase our population growth pretty quickly. Uh, spaceport's still building. And real quickly, let's go back into here actually. And I almost forgot to do this. Yes, actually. Oh, select colony. That's what I want to do. Um, what I actually want to do is lower the... Uh, I think I want to lower the tax on this colony. Oh, right here. So tax 13%. 
Um, and the reason for that is because the lower the taxes, the happier people are. And the happier people are, the faster the population grows. So, um, a lot of people will do a tactic where they'll lower it all the way to zero and then only raise the tax when they need the cash flow. Um, I'm just going to lower it to 2%. I think with our extra bonuses we have, we won't have an issue with increasing our population. And so, uh, this will be, uh, I think this will grow quickly. If it's not growing quick enough, I'll actually stick 4%. If it's not going quick enough, then we will go back and change that. But let's just keep it at 4% for now. I want to be making a little bit of money here. Um... We are going to be in the negatives a little bit, but that's okay. We have enough cushion room to kind of make up for it. Let's hurry up and get this. Ooh, a new scientist appeared. Wow, really? Holy shit, a new scientist? Spaceport gets built and I get a scientist? That's fantastic. This is already a great start. High-tech research and energy research. That is, that is great. So we'll just put him right there on our, on our, uh, on our spaceport and uh, keep him there. That's fine. And spaceport constructed. So uh, we have constructed a spaceport. This large orbital base serves as a shipyard, allowing us to build many different types of starships. The construction of our new spaceport has galvanized the, re the resolve of our population, providing a short-term boost to our economy. Our new spaceport also provides a hub for trade and commerce. Freighters will deliver cargo here and ships can, can refuel here. As our technology progresses, we should upgrade our spaceport with other capabilities, shields and weapons for defense, research labs, sensors, and more. So there we go. We got a spaceport and unfortunately we are out of time for this episode. So like I said, the game is a little slow in the beginning. It does take a bit to start off, but I promise it does pick up and it is going to be absolutely fantastic when it does. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time.